Hello, mutants. I'm Utisha, the movie goddess, and you're watching Mutant TV. Welcome back, MVP Strebo here with you again from Mutantville.com. And I thought I'd do a post convention swag report uh, for the Fright Night Film Fest Fandom Fest. Here you can see the ad for the Fandom Fest on the back of last year's convention program guide. As far as I could tell, there were no program guides for this year, which I was a little disappointed by, but no biggie, I still got the most from my unique convention experience. I had an absolute blast talking to the people, talking to uh, guys from Dead Pit, um, everybody from the Dead Pit boards, other people I know from online, all good stuff, had a good time. Sorry, let me get that back for you. But anyway, before I get rambling too much, uh, let's uh, take a look at some of the swag that I was able to pick up. So we're going to start here in my Cthulhu movie collection. Had to rearrange a little bit. Um, well, might as well point this one out since it's the first one. But ironically, I did not get this at the Fright Night Film Fest. I picked this up today <laughs> during my lunch hour at the uh, Mom and Pops video store right across the road from where I was working today. And uh, yeah, three bucks. Got to scrape that that off but this is actually the second dead space animated movie and that's a really cool series and uh i put it up here with my cthulhu section because it's kind of lovecraftian but um actually we got it this all right that's a bit of a misnomer to just call this my cthulhu section it's more like my origins of modern horror because we have lovecraft tales from the crypt roger corman and then down here, George Romero. So that's what leads us to here. Sharktopus. The latest entry from Roger Corman. Sharktopus. Just picked it up because he produced it and does a commentary track, which I'm all about some commentary tracks, and it doesn't look like that's gonna focus. So sorry about that. But Sharktopus, yeah, it's exactly what its name implies. Uh, the nasty thing about it, imagine Jaws if he had tentacles and could just pull you into the water. That's kind of the gimmick of shark It's like you don't have to go into the water. He just goes, come here, bitch, and pulls people right in. Now, that's funny because none of the things I just talked about I actually picked up at the Fright Night Film Fest. Much like this book, which I got on my lunch hour last week <laughs> when I was working in a different part of town. The Cthulhu Mythos by August Derleth. Now here's a few more. This is actually part of my bookstore score. I picked up Whitley Strieber's, Strieber's Communion. A true story. Now Strieber is the guy that wrote... Um, was it Wolfen? No. Darn it. Now I can't think of the name of it. But he, he actually he wrote... It, it was a werewolf movie. Uh, I can't remember which one it is. I might have to put it in annotations. But anyway, he he claims to have been abducted by aliens, and this is the true story behind it. They eventually turned it into a movie starring Christopher Walken. I uh, figured, what the heck, I'll check it out. Check this out. Four screen make, screenplays by Ingmar Bergman. It has wild strawberries, and also, not that I've ever seen wild strawberries, mind you, but it's the only one that... Uh, only other title I'm familiar with in here but it also has the seventh seal which is uh, you know just an epic movie on its own for so so many reasons so I'm really interested in the screenplay for this I like to I like to have good screenplays on hand Let's see if I can get out of my shadow here here's speaking of another screenplay the movie script for time bandits a movie that really weirded me out as a kid but it's got storyboards and character sketches and all kinds of cool stuff in here very very cool find and then last but not least Pulp Fiction screenplay Quentin Tarantino hardcover Academy Award winning screenplay so I mean when you're looking for inspiration you can go to the best let's get over here there's a few things we got at the Fright Night Film Fest brought to me by T-shirt Joe Helped me flesh out my Italian section a little bit. 
specifically with Dario Argento, the bread and opera, both of which he said were boring and he wanted to get rid of, so I was more than happy to take them off his hands. <laughs> where else, where else, where else? Oh, well, this is another one that's not the Fright Night. I'm saving the, the big stuff for last, obviously. This is all post-Fright Night swag, making of King Kong. A dollar at the local bookstore, just like that Cthulhu Mythos book I just showed you. A dollar at the local bookstore. Yeah, sorry, I should have warned you from the beginning. This is going to be a little bit out of order because uh, I've already been assimilating all the new acquisitions into the collection. So, having to go around and dig them all up. Oh, here's another dollar book. So, you can tell I spent like four bucks last Friday at lunch. Clive Barker, Hellbound Heart. Obviously, this is the source material for Hellraiser. Check out that cover art. Pretty wicked. Wicked mine. Okay, here we have, this is my list of questions that I had for John Carpenter. Um, I had some other people written on there. You can see Linda Blair, David Knott, and see Thomas Howe, but I actually never talked to them. So I wound up using that for Carpenter. And here's something, again, I did not get at the Fright Night Film Fest. It's an Ashcan comic for Fantastic Tales of the Unknown by Chris Gervais, who's also a local filmmaker in the Charlotte film community. And uh, his movie Junker is really awesome. It actually beat out Scarecrow at Midnight at Con Carolina's 2011 Film Festival. Uh, which I was okay with because Junker is really awesome. To obtain the copy, there you go. Contact Chris Gervais. Exploding Boy Mail. Exploding Boy at gmail.com. Yeah, so cool stuff. You can just tell there's a level of talent involved just from the cover itself. Nice throwback to Amazing Stories, Twilight Zone kind of stuff. Now here, <laughs> the best flyer you could find at the Fright Night Film Fest. This is actually one of the black and white versions. Not on this side, this side has that awesome full color reproduction from our buddy uh, Jason Arispe who provided those for us. This is one of the early error ones, I printed them upside down. And there's our flyer from the back. The unofficial Roger Foreman Film School or 10 Tips from the King of the Bees that every filmmaker needs. Got the Mutitia comic. There's Mutitia again. Apparently some people got pissed off. I said that was the best flyer you could get at the con, but because they disliked my video where I proclaimed that. <laughs> Which amuses me very much. Uh, but uh, I wouldn't say it if I didn't think it was true. I'm just uh, trying to get everybody else to step up their games. You guys step up your game. Make me step up mine. And uh, yeah, it'll be good for everybody. Okay, here we go. Finally getting to an 8x10. Here's J.D. Feigelson. Uh, writer of Dark Knight of the Scarecrow. Epic classic, cult classic. Made for television movie. Really cool guy. Ironically, he was the first person that came to our table, uh, Mutantville Productions booth on Saturday. It was, it was really awesome. It was a very auspicious beginning, um, one might say. Got to talk to him about Dark Knight of the Scarecrow, and we interviewed him. We got a cool interview for him coming up. And he was talking about how he was proud that people have determined over the years that Dark Knight of the Scarecrow basically was the progenitor of the Scarecrow subgenre of horror. And uh, he was really thrilled to see another movie about Scarecrows with Scarecrow at Midnight. He was, he was excited about it. So we wound up giving him a screener and, and stuff and told him his movie was an inspiration on us. Though our movie is very different, but I think that's kind of the whole point of inspiration is using that inspiration to do something different, not to just make a fan film. Here we go, one of my favorites. This was the hardest picture I had to choose over the weekend, Jim Kelly. I'll be too busy looking good. Here he is squaring off with Muhammad Ali. Kelly had a lot of cool pics of him with uh, with Bruce Lee, obviously from the set of Enter the Dragon. But this was the one he had with Muhammad Ali, who was my favorite all-time boxer. I just thought, oh man, I just I gotta go with this. This is just an epic black exploitation face-off dream battle. 
So I went with that. Again, got an epic interview with Jim Kelly coming. It's it's huge. It's actually probably about 30 minutes long. I'm gonna have to chop it up into parts. T-shirt from the Georgetown Drive-In Theater. Went there to see Halloween 35 millimeter. Wound up seeing American Graffiti instead uh, with Happy Days as a double feature. It was actually a really good show, though I was initially disappointed they didn't play Halloween. Uh, I was looking forward to seeing it at the drive-in. But then I got kind of swept away in the whole Henry Winkler American Graffiti show, and it was a really awesome show. I had a good time and kind of got over my initial disappointment, but uh, thought I'd buy a shirt, support them, and promote one of the last drive-ins left in the country. Yeah, here we go. Another t-shirt. This one specifically from the man they call T-Shirt Joe. I get my shadow out of the way. The Thing. Pretty wicked. T-Shirt Joe consistently has the best T-shirts for the best price. Indie filmmakers, if you're not working with him to get your shirts i don't know what's wrong with you and bigfoot don't stop believing because i do live in a little town in north carolina i almost said where it was uh where uh, people believe bigfoot is it out in the woods which believe it or not i've been i've had in mind to shoot a bigfoot video of my own take you guys on a tour of the woods out here because uh, i actually have some crazy bigfoot stories not that i've ever seen him but uh Okay, another one I did get from the convention. This is actually the only one I bought from um, a vendor was uh, Dark Star. This is cool from VCI Entertainment. They had the special edition, um, which is really awesome. It has a, uh, here I'll show you right on the front, packed with over three hours of bonus features on two DVDs. It has a really cool documentary on the making of Dark Star. It explains how they expanded it from a student film and added all the scenes with Pinback just doing random stuff to flush it out into a full-length feature. But it also tells a really interesting story of John Carpenter's personal battle with USC over ownership of his student films because he won an Academy Award for Resurrection of Bronco Billy and then the school basically claimed ownership of it. So this was a totally awesome acquisition even if you don't like the movie for its historical significance and also uh, for the behind the scenes um, featurette, which feature which is like two hours long on its own. And the, Lieutenant Doolittle was there. I wish I would have talked to him about Dark Star, but you know, I don't know. I just uh, I just didn't. Sometimes I uh, I have to have a really good angle when I go in to talk to people. I can't just randomly talk to everybody. I have to feel feel good about it. And I don't know. I've only seen Dark Star like twice, maybe three times, and. It's not something I have everything committed to memory in it, so I just didn't feel confident confident about trying to interview him. So I hate that I did that because I really missed out. Because after watching the documentary on here, I had a lot of questions I could have asked him about Carpenter's early career. But there you go. You live and you learn. It's not about the ones that get away, but the ones you catch. All right, so let's get to the good stuff. You can see I added Addie Miller to the wall there, and also. Roger Corman from last year's Fright Night Film Fest. Pretty sweet. But this is it. This is what we went for. This is what it all came down to. John Carpenter. Now the funny thing is, <laughs> when I went to his table, I was dead set on getting a picture from In the Mouth of Madness. Well, when I got there, I didn't see any pictures from In the Mouth of Madness. And uh, his assistant was kind of trying to rush me, so I just picked this one. But I don't really know. I can't tell which movie it's from. Is it from The Thing? What is I have no idea. So anybody, if you can tell me what movie that's from, you win a Shrebo, no prize. <laughs> but anyway, so there's my autograph that I paid for. Um, got to do that on Friday, talk to Carpenter then. There's my picture. Of course, I paid for that too. Um, we did that on Saturday, got to talk to him on Saturday. And I put this little collector's car from the Masters of Horror DVD case in there. Figure, hell, what the hell else am I gonna do with it? Let's make a nice little display out of it. But it was totally worth it. Q&A with Carpenter on Saturday. On Sunday, um, well, his acceptance speech was very, very brief at the uh, 
at the awards ceremony. But still, it was cool. And of course, we got to talk to them. And that footage is coming soon.